Let us now discuss the cropping pattern in India. Cropping pattern, what is the meaning of this? A one mark question again from examination point of view. When we understand, okay, there is this much amount of land on which we are growing rice, then there is this much on which we are growing ragi, there is so much more on which we are growing maize. So when we try and understand the proportion or the area of land on the different crops at a given time, that is called the cropping pattern. On what does it depend? It depends on so many things. It depends on the amount of sunfall, rainfall, availability of irrigation facilities, the scientific technology and equipment available to the farmer, the relief, the soil, the fertility, all of these determine what crop is grown where. So the cropping pattern of a region refers to the proportion of an area under different crops at a given time. The cropping pattern of any region in India changes from time to time. Why? Because of several factors such as relief, soil, climate, size of the farm, water supply, income of the farmers, technology and so on. Students, even if you learn any three or four factors, it is more than enough. What are the major crops of India? Now we will learn them. They are food crops, they are commercial crops, they are oil seeds and they are plantation crops. Now we will learn about each one in detail. The crops which are grown to provide food for people are called food crops. We eat this every day like rice, wheat, jewel, pulses etc. Now we will learn about rice as a crop, what is the amount of water it needs, what is the kind of temperature, how much part of India grows rice and so on. It is the most important food crop of India. It is a staple food. Staple food means we eat it every single day. Where all do people consider this to be a staple food? In eastern India, in southern India and southwestern parts of India. India has the largest area under the rice cultivation in the whole world. Why? Because we have alluvial soil. The soil that was brought down by the deposition of the rivers. Alluvial soil and clay soils are the best suited for this and since we have a lot of the soil we grow rice. Rice needs standing water and it needs level land. So the plain the plain, the northern plains that have alluvial soil, they also have water because the Himalayan rivers flow there and the area is flat. All the three conditions that are needed for growing rice are provided. Irrigation is necessary whenever rainfall is less. It's grown in almost all the states of India. Which is the largest producer of rice? West Bengal is the largest producer of rice. Which are the other states that produce rice? Andhra Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Tamil Nadu, Odisha, and Karnataka. Now let's talk about wheat. Wheat is the second most important food crop and it's a rubby crop. Rice is a kharif crop. Wheat is a rubby crop. Wheat is an important staple food again of Indians, especially the northern and northwestern Indians. Wheat is a crop of the temperate region so it is mostly a winter crop. It requires a moderate temperature of just 11 to 15 degree Celsius and even in terms of rainfall it does not require as much rain as rice required just about 50 to 70 centimeters. Heavy loams and black soils are the best suited for wheat cultivation. Where is wheat mainly grown? Where is it mainly eaten? In northern parts of India. So it's grown in the northern plains including Punjab, Rajasthan, Gujarat and Maharashtra and northern parts of Karnataka. Uttar Pradesh is the largest producer of wheat in India. India is the second largest producer of wheat in the whole world after China. Now we saw the food crops. Food crops are the crops that we eat on an everyday basis. We in detail studied about rice and wheat. Roti and rice. We eat every day so we learnt about that. Now we will learn about commercial crops. A crop that is grown for sale is called commercial crop like sugarcane, cotton, tobacco, oil seeds etc. 
Now we will learn about the most important commercial crop, sugarcane. We all like sweets. Our life would be so boring without sweets. So the origin of sweet is the crop of sugarcane and now we will learn about it in detail. India has the world's largest area under sugarcane cultivation. It is the second largest producer of sugarcane in the world only after Brazil. It is the native of India. Sugarcane is a crop of India, from India. It gave this crop to the whole world. Sugarcane is the main source of all our favorites. Sugar, Gur, Khandasari. They also say in Kannada, Kalsakre. Sugarcane is an annual crop. Annual crop meaning it takes one full year. If you sow it in March, then you will get the crop next year in February. So it takes 12 months for the whole crop cycle to complete. And it is grown in irrigated areas. It requires a very high temperature of 21 to 26 degrees Celsius and heavy rainfall ranging from 100, 100 to 150 centimeter per year. Where does it thrive the best? In alluvial and loamy soils just like rice. The most important sugarcane producing states are Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Gujarat and Andhra Pradesh. They are all highlighted here for you students. Now the next most important commercial crop is tobacco. It is one of the most important crash crops of India. It's used for making everything related to smoking like BD, cigarettes, cigar, chewood, hookahs, everything. Very little is used for chewing, snuff and other insecticides. Sugarcane is a tropical crop. Students, whenever we say something is tropical, we mean it needs high temperature. If something is a temperate crop, it means it doesn't need high temperature. It can manage with moderate and low temperature. So because tobacco is a tropical crop, it requires high temperature of 21 to 23 degrees Celsius. It requires 50 to 100 centimeter of rainfall in a year. Sandy and loamy soils are suited for tobacco cultivation. It also requires a lot of chemical fertilizers for its growth. Which states in India? Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Uttar Pradesh, Karnataka. Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra and Bihar are leading producers of tobacco. India is the third largest producer and fourth largest exporter of tobacco in the world. You all may ask, ma'am, so many states for so many crops, it's so confusing, how would I remember them all? You all should just remember one or two states, it's more than enough, it's not commonly asked in the exam. But you must make note of crops for which India is the largest producer. Next, let's discuss fiber crops. Fiber crops means we use these crops to make cloth. It could be cotton, it could be jute and so on. The crops which provide raw material for textile industries are called fiber crops. One mark definition, cotton and jute are the most important fiber crops. Now we will learn about cotton in detail. Exam point of view, cotton is very important. It is an important industrial and fiber crops. It provides raw materials for which textile industry? Cotton textile industry. It is a tropical and a subtropical crop. Tropical means it will require high temperature. So 21 to 24 degrees Celsius temperature and rainfall of 50 to 100 centimeter. If you remember in soil, we also said that black soil is called cotton soil. Why? Because it is best suited for cotton cultivation. So black cotton soil is the best suited for its growth. Is it a kharif crop or a rabi crop? It requires high temperature. Anything that requires high temperature is a kharif crop. Where is it grown mainly? In Gujarat, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Haryana, Madhya Pradesh, Punjab, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu are the major producers of cotton. India has the largest cotton growing area and is the third largest producer of cotton in the whole world. Now let's talk about beverage crops. What is the meaning of beverage students? A drink that we have on an everyday basis. What are the drinks that you take on an everyday basis? Tea and coffee. So when we talk about beverage crops, we are talking about tea and coffee. Tea is the most important and the cheapest of all beverages. 
Yes, students, if you notice, if you go out to buy juice, if you buy a milkshake, if you buy a lassi, you buy any drink, which is the cheapest? Tea is the cheapest. So, India is the second largest producer of tea in the world. After whom? After China. Tea and coffee both are also plantation crops. So, if you all remember, we learnt in various types of vegetation, plantation as well. So, you already know where are plantation crops going, what is the temperature, what is the rainfall. So, you can connect what you have learnt in the last class to here. It is a tropical and subtropical crop. So, it means it will require high temperature of 21 to 30 degrees Celsius. It also requires heavy rainfall of 150 to 250 centimeter. It grows best in deep fertile soil and it must also be very rich in humus. What is humus students? Humus is the dead and decaying matter of plants and animals. It grows in the slopes of hill with an altitude with a height of 1200 to 2400 meters above sea level which is the where is it mainly grown it's grown in Assam, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Assam, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. You will find tea plantations in these four regions. Now students we will learn about horticulture. What is this horticulture? Growing fruits and vegetables is horticulture. The intensive cultivation of fruits, vegetables, flowers, medicinal and aromatic plants is called horticulture. For one mark it is very important. In India, horticulture provides an incentive for making agriculture more profitable. How? Through efficient use of land, optimum utilization of resources and generating skilled employment for the rural masses. We can also participate in exporting on a large scale if we grow horticultural crops. If you all know students, the mangoes are in such great demand. The lettuce, a, a leaf commonly used to make burgers, these are also in great demand for export from India. India has a variety of climate and soil and we can make good use to grow horticultural crops. India has emerged as an important producer of horticultural crops. It is the second largest producer of fruits and vegetables in the whole world. Its share in the global production of fruits is 11 percent that is such a big percentage and that of vegetables is 7 percent. Horticulture is carried on where mainly in Andhra Pradesh, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir you may have heard of Kashmir apples. Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Maharashtra and Uttar Pradesh. Now let's talk about floriculture. Floriculture is nothing but growing flowers. It is cultivation of flowers for commercial purpose. India is known for the art of growing flowers. You heard of so many gardens, the tulip garden, the rose garden and so on. It plays a very significant role in Indian agriculture. India has the potential of generating income and providing employment opportunities for lakhs of farmers, especially for women when we export flowers to other countries. And India's climatic conditions also suit for the growth of flowers. So what are the flowers grown in India? Jasmine, marigold, rose, chrysandra and aster. Cut flowers includes orchids, gladiolus, carnation, anthurium and lilies. Floriculture is very well developed in Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Punjab, Haryana and West Bengal. This brings us to the end of the chapter students. Now let's look at the backside exercises on page 136. Question 1. The land which is not used for cultivation is called fallow land. A system of farming involving both crops and livestock is known as mixed farming. The crops grown between the Kharif and Rabi crops are called Zaid. The largest rice producing state in India is West Bengal. And next, what is meant by land use pattern? The distribution of land for different uses such as forestry and cultivation pastures etc is called land use or land utilization. 
what is plantation farming give example it refers to cultivation of a single crop on large estates for the market it requires more labor and more capital tea coffee rubber and coconut are the most important plantation crops of india distinguish between the kharif crop and the rabi crop very important from exam point of view the rabi the sowing takes place in october to november the kharif the sowing takes place in june july the sowing requires north east monsoon this one requires the opposite south west monsoon rain crops wheat barley grain linseed are important rabi crops rice jowar ragi cotton groundnut are the important kharif crops what are the conditions required for sugarcane cultivation sugarcane is an annual crop it requires high temperature of 21 degrees to 26 degrees and heavy rainfall from 100 to 150 cm per annum it thrives best in alluvial soil and loamy soil the most important sugarcane producing states are uttar pradesh and maharashtra tamil nadu karnataka gujarat and andhra pradesh what are beverage crops give example what are the beverage crops tea and coffee the crops which are used to produce simulating drinks are called beverage crops example coffee and tea explain the role of horticulture in india the intensive cultivation of fruits vegetables flowers medicine and aromatic plants is called horticulture in india horticulture provides an incentive for making agriculture more profitable through efficient land use optimum utilization of natural resources and generating skilled employment for rural areas it enhances the exports and provides nutritional security students this brings us to the end of the chapter india's land resources it may be a little long break it down into the small small parts and learn one part at a time i'm sure you will do really well in your upcoming exams okay students goodbye see you for the next chapter